Hey up and welcome to Matt's Mindful Meals. We've come down to Rue Glass again because we're a little bit short of time and it goes dark around about half past eight and we're now about 20 to six. So we've got to basically get down to where we need to be, get set up and start cooking because tonight I'm going to be cooking steak and Guinness casserole with dumplings and that takes quite a while. It's easy to do, it just takes a long time to cook because you want to cook it slowly. Anyway, less gassing time to get moving so I'll see you when we set up so as you can see we got down here with the meal machine so time to set myself up because we are behind time. See you in a minute. <laughs> I've only gone and forgot my tent, haven't I? Anyway, Moo's gonna nip back and get my tent from mine and, and I'll get on with the cooking. So. Let me get my firebox set up and I'll speak to you in a minute and I'll see you when he gets back. Tra! So tonight's ingredients. What I've got in this bag here is some diced beef that it's got lots of freshly ground pepper on and some flour. So that's just soaked on there, just so it helps to thicken the sauce a little bit later. I'll use a little bit of water to top it up every now and again, but the main cooking liquid is gonna be that can of Guinness that's there. Inside the billy can that we're gonna be cooking it in, you can see onions, parsnips, potatoes, and behind that, a cheeky little bit of carrot there. Some stock cubes, so I've got three OXO cubes, a whole bulb of garlic and of course a chilli. A little bit of oil to get things going and this takes a lot of time. <laughs> now it takes about two hours to cook and then some dumpling mix and that's leaning against my firebox stove five inch gen 2 firebox which it's all going to be cooked over real flames tonight. Anyway time to get the prep done. Right, first time I came to these woods to sleep, I came here with English Woodsman and Oscar Outdoors and a mate of mine, Dave. And one of us forgot a tent then. It wasn't me, I'm not gonna tell you it was. Uh, but yeah, so it might have something to do with this neck of the woods. I think it's designed for you not bring your tent with you. Anyway, Mo's gone get that. In the meantime, I can get the veg on. Because as I say, this thing takes a while to cook. It takes no time to prepare at all. But it does take a while to cook because you want to cook it slowly and let all the flavours brew. So all you've got to do really is roughly chop the veg. I don't even peel the potatoes. Now the thing with the potatoes is, obviously, the smaller they are, the shorter amount of time it takes to cook. But what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to leave them quite chunky, as you'll see in a sec. So they're about that size. But it takes quite a while for them to then boil through. So there is a little bit of chunky potato left. Because if there isn't, it, if you cut them too small, it can just turn into a paste. But it's nice having chunks of vegetables to eat. Bit of parsnips. Again, I'm not going to peel them because there's no point. Because they're cooking for that long. The skin just disappears. Well, it doesn't disappear. But you can't tell it's on there anyway. What else have we got? We've got onions in a second. Yeah, and I'm not even going to fast forward with this because it doesn't take too long to cook, chop up, I mean, at all. This one. And the beauty, if you put everything inside your billy can, you know that you've not bought too much because it definitely fits in. Thank you. 
I think by now, Mo's probably texted all the lads in the Goonies, so he's probably speaking to Nige and Dave right now, telling them that I forgot everything. I'll have my revenge one day. So when it comes to the onions, Do take the skin off the onions though. Put this to one side. The weather's got a little bit colder here. It's gonna get down to around about five degrees later tonight. And I know that's not very, very cold, but you can definitely tell we're starting to get towards winter now. Now for the carrots, exactly the same again. Just chop them up. We're in no rush to eat tonight. The only snag is with my photograph that I normally put on my videos will be taken without any natural light, so we'll see how that comes out. One more potato. A little bit more carrot. That'll be enough carrot, I think. A couple more. I forgot to say mushrooms. Well, the mushrooms, because I just break them up. Because they're going to be boiled down for so long, you'll barely notice them anyway. So you don't need to chop them up perfectly. So break them up. Garlic now. Oh, that's a tough one. Is it going to beat me? Get rid of most of the papery bits. I tend to chop the end off. Give them a bit of a press. Peel most of the skin off. You see that? Just throw that in like that. Give it a crush. Throw it in. Couple more. If 
that, might as well do them all. So you see, some of them are really crushed. This one needs a bit more of a crush. Throw most of this away. Then finally, wouldn't be one of my meals without some chili in it. Now that there is all your preparation done. So the only thing left to do now is to brown the meat off. So I'll get myself all set up in the middle of here with my fire and I'll catch you in a sec. Here it is. Look what I found. So, as you can see, I've got a baking tray on top of the meal machine. This is an aluminium plate, but I don't want to get it all black and dirty because I do take it away on different trips and it's sometimes nice to sit on. So I don't want to get it too dirty. So as you can see, I've put a few bits of kindling wood into the firebox and I've got a couple of these twisted fire starters um, you can get them from all different places You can pay a lot of money for some expensive kind But you can pay as I've done um, I think there's about four quid off Amazon for a huge bag full Anyway, as it's coming to winter Old Faithful's come out Now, you'll have seen this on my earlier videos But I looked this for this for ages last night and I couldn't find it Anyway, I found it in the bottom of a big box so it's been stored away for a whole year in the back of me, my wooden shed. So let's see if it works. So what we we'll need to do is rough the end up a bit. So then the sparks will take, or this is what something called jute rope. So what I'll do, I'll move this to the side. And you can see this real time as to whether I get it to work or not. So get this a little bit more rough. It feels nice and dry anyway, but I believe it works when it's damp because it's it's got some kind of wax in it. Anyway, moment of truth time. First go. Anyway, let's get this lit. And hopefully at least the beef can be done before Mo gets back. So just give it a bit of a light. Shouldn't take too long at all. First time. Cheers, Scott.
while I'm waiting for this to die down, I've returned to work full time hours now. Obviously I've got to work on my fitness and bring that back, but I'm able to train for longer. So hopefully that will start to, to start to show some benefits. Um, so yeah, so I've done a course this week, which was quite interesting. But it's good to get back in the game because when you've been away for so long because you've had an illness, I, I not wanted to go in because I couldn't speak properly. So I was embarrassed about that. Sometimes I completely lose track of where I was. But if you remember back to it, I was spending so much time asleep, I missed, missed out on everything. But yeah, I've got a routine in my life back and everything's cool. I can, if we get some more time, um, I can get out to more places, which we'll talk about a little bit later. because I've got a big exciting trip coming on with Dave. So I'll talk about that in a little bit, a little while. But anyway, I'm just going to sit here and enjoy watching these flames because not really had an open fire for, for so long now because it's been so dry. We've had quite a lot of rain over the last few weeks. So yeah, so it's not as, not, not as much of an issue, but you do still have to be careful whenever you're having a fire, even if it's soaking the wet around you. The last thing you want to do is burn yourself or burn any of your equipment. But yeah, being as I forgot my tent, there's no chance of me burning my tent down just now. Anyway, I'll be quiet and let you watch this a little bit more. Sorry, buddy. No worries, all good. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> so the fire's died down a bit. I will need to keep topping that up with other wood. So what I want to do is get this on. Let's get the meat going. Now that's the only oil. That's the only oil you use throughout the whole of the cooking. Big tip: if you're going to do something in a billy can, make sure you spoon gets all the way to the bottom otherwise you'll end up with your fingers in the hot soup so now what i've got to do is i've got to get this beef browned off won't take long at all i give this uh, I don't want to cook this on too high a heat and burn it. You want to get it nicely coloured and then we can add the Guinness into it. But it is important to keep adding. A little bit more wood. Anyway, so we've got a little bit of a coating on the outside of that meat. Time to add the Guinness. Don't be shy, get it all in there. Give that another stir. And keep stirring until you can feel the bottom becoming clean again. So that means you've got all of the flavor from the cooking of the meat. So I tend to let that come to the boil and then I'll start putting the veg in. So it's now starting to boil the beer is, so it's time to add the veg. So to make sure it all goes in spread out, don't just put all one lot of veg in, just mix it up as you're going along. So without looking or taking it too seriously,
bit of onion, potatoes and carrots, parsnips. So in each handful you're putting a little bit of a mixture in. When you get about halfway up though, stop and give it a stir, otherwise the meat will all end up staying on the bottom. And we don't want that, because we want to be a good mix of everything that's in there. So make sure you bring some of the meat up to the top. So now pop as much of this vegetables in as you want. Not leaving any of the chilli out. Get the garlic in. Fact, we can get all of this in. That's where it's really handy. If you bring everything in, the pop, because then you're not, you know, you're not going to put too much in. Now, I do like having a little bit of time in my broth. So the time's gone in. Give it another stir. Now what we need to do is top it to about an inch away from the top with water, as you can see there. Give it another little stir. Now we need to add the stock cubes. Now, I love OXO cubes and mine's what I'm used to being brought up with, but whatever stock cubes you use, I normally use one per person and one for the pot. So obviously for this, it's gonna be me and Mo, then one for the pot, so that's three. Now you'll notice I haven't put the mushrooms in yet. So put them in when it's gone down a little bit. So that's the stock cubes in. Stir this in a bit. The boiling action and the constant stirring every now and again will make sure that there's no bits that haven't got any of the stock cube in. But anyway, pop the lid on. And what we do now is we'll leave it alone but keep adding a little bit more firewood in to keep it going and it'll take a couple of hours from now and even I can set a tent up in that much time. Anyway, time to get this tent set up. So we're just taking it off the heat for a minute because it started boiling over. So you know that it's working. So now giving it a little bit of a stir so we can see everything is getting mixed up. Make sure you get right down to the bottom because that's where the, it'll get to the hottest. So if you don't get to the bottom, 
you might end up with some bits that catch when it doesn't taste too great. So make sure you give it a good old stir every now and again. Bubbling away nicely now. Yeah, I'm ready. Brilliant. Right then, as you can see the stew's done, the veggie's just right. So it's now time to get the dumplings in because they need to boil as well. So try and open this without getting it all over me. Useless. Anyway, so we'll get this in. All over my trousers. Everywhere. It's covered in it. Little tiny bit of thyme in the dumplings. Not much at all. That's plenty. Now, I've done this on a video in the past. But it was just like a short. So what you need to do is add a little bit of water and make it into a dough. If you put too much in, you can't take it out. So you've got to be careful. to do now is get it together and all we want to do is make tiny little balls and drop them into here And these go a lot bigger and they go nice and fluffy on the inside. Two more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. So cover them up. Get the fire going again. And I'll bring you back in a couple of minutes when they're all done. Speak to you in a bit. Right then, it's time. So it's been cooking now for nearly three hours. So here's the moment of truth. Oh, yes. So I think we're ready. It's time to dish up. That's hot. Just get a glove for now. Take it off the heat. Dish this up. Dumplings first. Four dumplings each. What I'll do, I'll grab Mo's plate and dish Mo's out. sure you want four dumplings Mo? Pretty sure yeah. Because I can definitely have a spare one. Well if I have five I think that's probably <laughs> fair. Oh you've got a piece of potato. So It's not the same. Give this a good old stir. So if you keep the veggies nice and chunky it pays dividends afterwards. So as you get a nice stew. 
I've never ever tried this with anything other than beef, but I'm sure you can do it with a little lamb or anything. But this is a traditional one. And now, if you're from Stoke, you can almost call this what we call in Stoke a lobby, because you basically lob everything in and it comes out really nice. But uh, as soon as I've got this dished out, me and Mo are gonna get our laughing gear smashed right into this. Oh, I love that one. Bit of chilli there, Mo. Good, good. So what I'll do now, I'll pour a bit of the juice out. Here we go. Bit of that gravy. Ooh, ooh. Anyway, as you can see, there's absolutely loads. So we'll be getting tucked into this. So we'll bring you back in a little while when we're vetting this and we'll give you some scores on the doors, but I'm sure it's going to be lovely. So I'll catch you in a bit. Ta! -ha. Well then, you can probably only just about see us because we've got the big lamp next to us. We've just finished what I would probably, I'm back again, would say is the the best stew I've made so far. So I've, I've just ruined the scores point, but we'll do it anyway. Because um, that's the second time I've ever done a stew in them billy cans. Anyway, so we're going to go for scores out of 10. I'll let Mo go first. So after three out of 10. 10, top whack, brilliant yeah. stuff. 10 for me and all, and I've not given 10 yet. That little bit of chilli and a bit of thyme took it more better than the one I did last time. And the dumplings will always finish the stew off perfectly. Mosquitoes everywhere. But uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that. And there's a little bit left over, so I'm going to take that home and give that to Grace tomorrow morning. Anyway, been a bit of a, a dark video, so I'm sorry about that, but coming to that time of the year anyway if you've liked what you've seen please subscribe and then hit the little bell and then you'll see whenever i do another video but until then next time take care of yourselves Ciao!